I am called Ham, since I enjoy ham radio. <gasps> hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for another Ham Shack Chat. In this video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth with using log for om and the CW mode. As always, if you have any questions, corrections, or humorous anecdotes, please leave your remarks down in the comments. Comments? This is the Handcrafters website where you can purchase the Winkier USB. And as always, this link is down in the video description. All Winkiers are created equal, so you do not have to worry about variations to match your rigs. However, not all rigs are created equal, so you'll have to have different cable combinations to get the dits and dahs from the wing gear to your rig. These connections will be discussed later in the video. Now, if you come up here and click on software, you'll see a bunch of tools that you can use. One tool that we're going to be working with is this WK3 Tools, which is the standalone keyer editor for wind gears. And if you want to use your wing keyer as a standalone auto keyer, this is a tool that you want to have. And again, we will discuss this in just a bit. If you open up your device manager and go to your ports, com, and LPT, your wing keyers should be listed there. I'm using COM7, COM13, and COM10 for my three different wind keyers. I'm going to be looking at serial port 7 and open that up and your port settings for any wind gear needs to be set up to 2400, 8, no parity, and 2. So make sure that that is set up in your computer that way. So this is the GUI. Oh, uh, you're a GUI romantic too. Guilty. For the WK3 tools utility that I showed you back when we were looking at the website. And the first thing you want to do is come in here and set your COM port. So I'm using the wind gear that's associated with my FT991A, which is COM7. You click on set COM port, brings up this little screen, and you select COM7 or whatever it is in your case because your numbers will probably be different. Now we want to do a test WK which just sets us up here, tells us what the version is, and then we're going to read the WK. And this is going just to this one, which is up here on top. Read WK, it is reading, and it has filled everything out. All of this stuff up here is pretty much the standard. And if you want more information on how to set this up, Here's a great little video. It is kind of designed for contesting, but it does a good job of explaining how to do your initial setup on the wind gear. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to check is your output selection. If you come here to output selection, you'll see that you have port 1 and port 2. I have mine set for everything. Port 1, side tone, and push to talk. So that's what I've selected there. Another thing that you can do is for standalone operations, you can enter up to four messages. And you'll see on the top of this, you've got four buttons. You got the red button and there are three more that might not show up on the video, but that red button is your message one, then message two, three, and four. I'm just going to put my call sign in message one and we'll do it twice and then click here. And once you've got all your messages done, if I was using this as a standalone, uh, you could enter your station information in message two, your station location or weather or whatever you wanted to enter in each of these messages. If you're doing a contest, Say you're doing field day, you can put your field day message in two and uh, your thank you message in all there. But you get the idea. You can fill it all in. Now I'm going to write everything I've set here to my wind gear. And you see I'm writing and I'm done. Now, if I come up here, I'm going to adjust my speed up just a little bit. And you'll see my radio key when I push this with my call sign twice. And before I get any criticism, I am feeding this at 5 watts into a dummy load. The heart of the wind gear is the K1EL processing chip. 
there are a number of different CW modems that use this chip, including the MicroHam MicroKeyer 3, DXP, and Micro2R, all available on the MicroHam website, and a couple of them are available on DX Engineering as well. As a disclaimer, I have no experience with any of these, so I cannot personally guarantee they will work as advertised. But if any of you have used them, please leave a remark down in the comment. And let me know how they work for you. From the Hamcrafter site, in addition to the wind gear we're looking at in this video, they have the WK-USB AF that adds an audio side tone output. The Winkier Mini for those who need the same functionality, but in a smaller package. A number of kits for you to build on your own, including the soon-to-be-released QRP CW Transmitter Kit. One that really interested me is the K45 CW Modem Keyer and Decoder that includes an interface for a USB keyboard. If you're enjoying this video so far, you found it informative or just a pleasant waste of time, please take a moment and pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. You like me. You really like me. So I pulled my wind keyer out of the system. I have three wind keyers for three radios. So this is the back. Up here is where you're going to plug your USB in and I'll do that in a second. I have it set up for key one, so I have that down here. And I'm going to plug my paddle in on this hole right here. Now I do want to talk about uh, some of the differences. I, I said earlier that all wind keyers are created equal, but not all radios are. That's not a slam on any radio one way or the other. I'm just saying they all have different setups. For example, my FT891 up here on top has the connector in the back and it is a 3.55 millimeter connector. I have the same setup to that particular wind gear. My TS890 down here on the bottom has a quarter inch plug in the front and in the back. So the 991, the connection phone is in the front, 891 in the back and the Kenwood both. Now we've got our log for OM up and we're going to go into our settings. Come down here to program configuration. Scroll down to CW keyer interface and you want to make sure your CW keyer is set for WinKey. We'll save and exit out of that and I'm going to come up here and you'll see the little keyer icon. I'm going to click that and it's going to bring up a second screen. One of the things that we can do is macros. So I'm going to show you first under macro information. These are all the shortcuts that you can use in your macros. For example, my call sign will either be in the brackets, my call, or just an asterisk. So we'll come here to macro and I'm going to delete some of these. These are the defaults. So I'm just going to delete those. And in message one, I'm going to go star, star. I'm going to change this to ND3NX2. So whenever I hit my F1 key, that's what's going to be set. Now that we've got this set up, I'm going to go to my WK settings tab right here. And you'll recognize a lot of this. I've got it set on COM7. I've got my keyers set up the way I want it. Very similar to what we did with the WK3 tools earlier. And my dummy load is still connected. So I'm going to start by pressing my F1 key. If you watch right up here under serial paddle, paddle echo, you'll see my call sign come up twice. Another feature that you can do, I'm going to clump, come up here, click on CW Tech. So I'm going to enter this as Tom, and when I press this button, and you can see it happening right here. So that's what I'm sending. Now, let me go back to my macros and just mention you can use your F1 through F12 keys. Useful if you're doing a contest, useful if you've got a planned QSO, 
and I'm going to take a little time off. I'm going to find a station to work. I'm going to listen to them for a while and create a few macros that would fit the conversation. That way I can just uh, bother, bother with that rather than using my straight key. And oh, by the way, I can reach over here. On the side, you can use your key here if you want. And if you keep track uh, up here on the serial paddle echo, you'll see I'm going to send a CQ. So you can see what I've sent, and that will clear off after a few seconds. But for now, we're going to try to come back and just use our macros. So I found a station to work. It's W1AW Portable Zero. I've just created two more macros. The first one, he's going to give me a report, which will go into my log. I'm going to go back to him with my report. And then finally, at the end, I'm going to send him my 73s. So let's go ahead and come here to my cluster. You can see this is the station I'm working right up on top. Bring him up. So now we'll just take care of a little bit of the paperwork and I'm going to send the spot for him and that brings up this information. I'm going to leave the message blank and just click on send spot and you can see here the reporter over here is now me. And the final thing that we want to do is I've got my W1AW slash zero up here. I want to make sure that I've got the right thing. I sent him a 579. And if I come way over here and press that button, I have just added that to my QSOS right there. So he's in the log and that completes the demo. Please help me spread the word about my videos by sharing this and other videos of mine with your friends and cohorts in the ham radio community. I've received notes from other viewers that they have shared some of their videos during their club meetings and that those videos were very well received. 73 until the next hey y'all. This has been another ND3N Ham Shack Chat. Always at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. I wonder what his next move will be.